everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you my days five, six, and seven of the Artist Trading Card a Day in June challenge. This is a hashtag challenge provided by myself and Peg Robinson, and we're just saying make an artist trading card a day and post it on any social media using the hashtag ATCAD2018. So you can still join us, it's only day eight and if you miss a day it's not a big deal don't stress over it it's just for fun and for encouraging you to get out your creative abilities and stretch your creative muscles this summer so for day five I decided to use this four by four stencil it's actually not four by four but that's what it was sold as is a small stencil from a um, girl that I know who has an Etsy shop and it's strumpet stencils and this one I think is is called balance because it has the word balance on it but I will link it in the description box below the video so that you can find it if you would like to purchase it um, this reminded me when I saw it on her site of these um, stones that I always see when I go to Sedona Sedona is in Arizona and it's it's this amazing red rock formation area and there's a lot of people who are very into mystical stuff who go there and they make these stacked stones. I'll insert a picture here. So I believe that the idea of stacking stones is to help you focus and have like an activity that really requires you to focus and put down your phone and to live in the now. And they are every place in Sedona at the places that people call vortexes, which are supposed to be centers of energy. Um, they're interesting, and I really do think that they do have meaning as to what the meaning is for each individual person. I can't really say, but when I saw the stencil, I thought, you know what? That reminds me of, of Sedona, and I like to go up there and hike around and look at the beautiful nature that has been provided for us. So that's why I decided to use this stencil today. I, I need to go to Sedona. I need a break. <laughs> I want to go hiking. And of course, it's it's getting pretty warm up there now. It's pretty hot, but um, cooler than it is where I live in Tucson. So I used some Marabou Media Art Sprays, which are a permanent acrylic spray that doesn't run. I wasn't sure what I was going to be doing over this. Was I going to collage? Was I, what was I going to do? So I wanted a permanent one so that I wouldn't smear and smudge and make a big mess when I put something wet over the top of it. I decided to just uh, use the stencil again and stencil the balanced rocks on there with some uh, heavy white gesso and then color them so that they become the focal image you know, I kind of just did them all over the place in the background Then I wanted a focal image. And I made this entire card with just this one little stencil. So it worked out really well. So I have my Pit Artist Brush pins out. These are India ink pins. And they happen to be right next to my hand, so I was able to grab them. And um, I'm using different colors to bring in light and shadow and to reflect the colors of the rocks up in the red rock country which they are red they're full of iron i believe and it's mostly sandstone and then it has little flecks in it like mica or fool's gold or something iron pyrite you know that fool's gold um something sparkles in them and if it's quartz that's probably why those particular areas seem to have a little bit of weird buzzing energy because uh, quartz does uh, collect and store energy so I don't know it's fun to visit those places there are a lot of these vortexes in Sedona and some of them require quite a hike some of them are uh, just a short hike and it's they're surrounded by beautiful stuff to look at so if you're ever traveling in Arizona I recommend you know if, if you go up to like say the Grand Canyon on a different day you can drive down a little bit and go to Sedona and check that out so I've just got different colors that I think might be in the rocks and I'm concentrating on the bottom parts 
in the bottom left to kind of make a shadow and then the top right is more to be light colored. Of course they need something to balance on. They cannot be floating so I needed to make a ground. And then I'm just adding a little bit of white acrylic using my Posca pen and kind of blending it with my finger just to add that highlight as if the sun is coming from the upper right hand side down and shining on the rocks. So then the, this stencil does have the word balance on it so um, balance is important in our lives and decided to just go ahead and use that as my message um, on the card. So I use the stencil to write the word using my white Posca pen and then I use the pen to connect all the the areas where the stencil has to have a gap in order for the stencil to stay together otherwise the word would just fall out of it and then I think my final step was to use the darkest indigo pin to just go down one side of the letters and make them a little bit more three-dimensional and oh yeah and I add some added some sparkles using stickles <laughs> which the diamond glitter glue stuff because I thought they needed sparkles since that those stones do have sparkles where I visited so that was day five's artist trading card and I hope you enjoyed it I'll be sure to link all the products below in the description box so you can find the marabou art sprays and the stencil and the whatever I used I don't know Day six, decided to collage. We grabbed some uh, pieces of napkins that are in the big box of scraps that sits on my desk when I don't want to put something away. I just put it in there thinking I'm going to sort it out later. And you know, we should be using those bits and bobs every once in a while so that we can use them up instead of just continually hoarding them. Um, of course, hoarding is fun. So I. I always do it <laughs> whenever I can but uh, just these are just like pieces of napkins that I've used a piece of it already on something else and I and I just had the extras oh, sorry didn't mean to yawn make everyone in the place yawn um, so I'm just tearing bits and putting them on here without really any big plan just getting some collage background on there because that's a good way to start when you don't know what you want to do is to start with collage. I need a little bit more pink over on the one side where there's like a little hole so this is just a different napkin that I grabbed that's same same bin of half used napkins <laughs> and I put the little heart shaped pink side over on that side. It's just the first layer it doesn't really show so much in the background later um, it's just how I started and once that was all dry I just put a very thin coat of gesso over the whole thing to kind of merge it all together and just make it into one background it really wasn't that bright I probably didn't need to do that in fact I really didn't need to do that but <laughs> I did then I was looking for something to be the focal image and I have this little basket of little snips of things from magazines and catalogs that haven't been cut out they're just you know I grabbed them out of something I was gonna throw away because I thought they were cute thought maybe I'd use them so I'm just going through those and auditioning and then I didn't like any of those so I ended up um, with this piece that is torn from an envelope that somebody sent me happy mail in and they, they decorated the outside of the envelope which a lot of people do when they send happy mail and this is I believe is a stamp and it's been stamped in gray it's a really cool stamp I like it and I kind of wished I owned it <laughs> because it's got this like postage thing and the swirly things around it which you don't see because I I cut or tore a lot of it away but um, I just was going to use the flowers since I had those hydrangeas in the background so I collage that on using my matte medium and then I got my uh, watering can archival ink in order to um, to scratch it along the edges of the card to make a border. I like to do that. I do that quite a bit. And then I decided while I had it out I would do a little bit of stamping so I used this chicken wire 
background stamp. Um, it's from a set of grunge textures from Bow Bunny, I think. I'll try to find it. It might be discontinued. And then I thought I would have a little bit of shimmer. So I got out some precious metal glimmer mist from Tattered Angels, which is kind of a uh, platinum colored mist with a ton of shimmer, like a ton of shimmer in it. It's so shimmery. <laughs> I know you can't see it on the video, but it's really, it's a fun mist. It's one of my favorites because it's very neutral, but yet you get this, this ton of shimmery stuff. So then I had out my um, SAI Japanese brush pens, markers, and I was, I was thinking I would color this in, but then I remembered I'd put all that that shimmery mica stuff on there which sometimes will clog up a regular pin but these pins are like a loose brush on the end so it's not going to clog up it's not a felt tip or anything like that so I decided to use those to color my flowers then I thought it needed something at the bottom and I still have this washi tape that I received in happy mail so I decided to put a line of it and then some words at the bottom. So I did use some glue stick because I was pretty sure that that washi tape was not going to stick <laughs> to all that shimmery stuff. So I used my uh, Elmer's permanent glue stick and I tried to put some shimmer over the top of it but it was resistant to that. So then I just grabbed uh, a little saying and what this reminds me of is when I was in the Institute of Studio Makeup, um, a lot of the people that I was there with wanted to make monsters. And they always were making these scary monstery things all the time. Whatever class we were in, whether it was makeup, whether it was sculpting, whether it was whatever, it was always scary stuff. And I just want to make pretty things. I want to make nice things. I want to make beautiful things. I don't want to make ugly, scary things. And so that little, those little words reminded me of that when I saw them in the Tim Holtz uh, sticker pack and I said that's what I need right there so that's what I put on there um, my next card for day seven I had out still these Stabilo um, woodies they're called and they're fat water soluble crayons I think they're probably marketed for kids because they have these um, big heavy well not heavy but fat easy to grip um, you know wood casings around the lead but they are fun because they're highly water reactive and they have a lot of pigment in them so I think they're good for big kids too <laughs> so I've I decided to play with them and instead of reactivating them with water I decided to use fluid matte medium so that my background would be permanent um, if you don't know what if you're going to collage or something over the top this could really smear around because it's very water reactive and so I did want to smooth out the bumpiness of course this is 140 pound cold press watercolor paper so it's bumpy so I'm getting a, a very crayon-y texture because I'm going over all those bumps with this and so I'm just making a rainbow you know you can't go wrong with a rainbow <laughs> Then activating it with the matte medium to make it permanent. So it was a nice bright rainbow card and all, you know, permanent and everything and dried with my heat tool. And I'm just sitting there going, what am I going to do with this? What the heck am I going to do with this? I don't know. It's a rainbow. What do you do with it? <laughs> you can see my hands are just like twitching around and... And I decided I'd better add some neutral to it. So I got out my black permanent pad and um, scraped it around the edges. And then I decided I would stamp a little bit. That stamp, the stamps, the grunge textures from Bow Bunny are still sitting on my desk. So I grabbed the kind of um, lacy dot one and put some black dots on there. Now it's looking more like something. But still not sure. So I decided to put some drips because drips are always fun. These, this is my uh, fine liner bottle, which has a very fine gauge needle on it. And it has fluid titanium white paint in there. 
Um, I didn't dry the ink and the titanium actually picked up a little bit of the ink and made some weird gray streaks. So then I ended up putting some black drips on there as well. And I had this, uh, this is a coloring page and it's from the Day of the Dead coloring book. And a friend of mine had torn out one page and sent it to me because she saw that I like Dia de los Muertos. And um, I've made a few projects. And so she sent me this coloring page and it has a lot of different stuff on it. So I just trimmed out this little um, sugar skull guy with a top hat. And then on that same page was this little diamond. So I decided to put that on there because it seemed fun and color, you know, sugar skulls or decorations for Dia de los Muertos are very colorful, very, very, lots of color. And, you know, serapes often have like a lot of rainbow colors. So I thought it was appropriate. So then I decided I would just color him using the Stabilo crayons as well. Um, no sense in getting something else out when I already have that out. So I have my Arteza brush pin. Uh, it's a water tank brush and they come in a lot of different sizes in a set and um, I'm just scribbling the colors onto my deli paper that's underneath my project and then picking it up with the, the water brush pin and um, coloring. The, the color paper, the coloring page paper, however, is not allowing, it's soaking in and not allowing the colors to be as bright as they were on my background. Um, they're still bright enough, but they, they, it do, they do dull down as they dry, which was kind of weird and disappointing. I was like, that's not cool. I could have gotten out some markers or something instead, but I'm just going to stick with it. And if it's not quite as bright as I wish it was, that's life. It's just the way it goes. <laughs> So I use the same colors as I used in the background, obviously. Same crayons, except for an addition of the black crayon to make a light gray shadow. And um, once that was dry, I was kind of thinking it was a little bit too dark. So I decided to get out my Posca pen and brighten up some of the areas a little bit, which I thought was a good idea. <laughs> Add some highlights or something. And at some point I end, it, end up actually using my water brush with the white pen. I'm not sure when that comes up. But um, you can do that. You can put a little bit, a little puddle of Posca on your, your uh, palette or your paper or whatever and then pick it up with the water brush pen. So I ended up doing that at some point. So I hope you are enjoying these ATC videos and I, I know that a lot of you are participating and having a lot of fun with it. I've seen so many beautiful ATCs on Instagram and in our two groups, Pegastic Challenge and Art Joy of Sharing. And so I've, I'm excited that people are playing along. Um, I think this is where I do it. Yeah, there we go. See, you can just pick up the white and put it on there if you think it's gotten too grungy or whatever. But of course then my white went over the lines and I had to <laughs> draw the lines back in. It's, you know, push and pull, push and pull. <laughs> but anyway, that's just how it goes. I had to add that red back into his cheeks. Then I had to get my black pin and of course this one's fatter than the lines and so I'm getting fatter lines. Um, it's my black Posca, but anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this. Leave me a thumbs up, a comment or question below, and subscribe if you haven't already. And turn on those notification bells so that you can not miss a video if one comes out. And um, share if you want to. You can post this on Pinterest or um, your Facebook or something like that. That helps out my channel, helps me grow so that I can do more fun free videos for you. That's it for me. Bye-bye.